Hello again. An article has appeared on my desk recently and by that you could imagine perhaps that I have this extremely busy kind of office printers and stuff and someone says sir you need to take a look at this and smacks a piece of newspaper on my desk but no I just read it on the Atlantic the article is by a certain Adam Frank and it's titled was there a civilization on earth before humans and I just wanted to record a short follow-up on this news item because a few months ago I recorded a podcast on the exact same subject and I just want to go over this new article and basically list the points which I agree with and which I don't agree with in this article so here we go you could read it on the link below and you could also listen to my old post podcast on the subject in the link section below but here we go April 13 2018 so okay Adam Frank and Gavin Schmidt were talking about aliens and suddenly they started talking about basically civilization on Earth's evolutionary past and he says we're used to imagining extinct civilizations in terms of sunken statues and subterranean ruins these are kinds of artifacts of previous societies are fine if you're only interested in time scales of a few thousand years but once you roll the clock back tens of millions or hundreds of millions of years things get more complicated I agree I mean it's true that in a few million years nothing of our society would survive but also don't be so 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 certain you know i mean this article says yeah fossils go back for long but there are fossils of course they say but the fraction of life that gets fossilized is always minuscule and varies a lot depending on time and habitat now i wanted to bring up fossils because almost certainly some garbage from our society will get fossilized i mean something like a coke can a jar i don't know even iron screws or just even the empty shafts of certain mines could remain as fossils for millions and millions of years long after all artifacts on the planet have been ground to dust so there's a minor disagreement on my behalf there but the most interesting thing pointed out in this article is something that i didn't notice before the what they call the paleocene eocene thermal maximum so during this period heat on the planet rose dramatically and maybe some of you would know that we got those immense snakes like titanoboa and those brief interlude right after the death of dinosaurs where basically it was like a hothouse all around the planet and it turns out that i didn't realize but these conditions were really similar to what humans are doing to earth in this day and age so there was not only a kind of high temperature but also there were like eocene layers of mysterious urgen so basically sediments that geologists cannot clearly explain how they got there and they think hmm, could these be maybe the carbon residues or the garbage or basically the results of an activity of an advanced civilization and there they talk about these things i mean they say hmm they say in this day and age our society's plastics carbon fuels will be noticeable in the future and they also make these kind of media savvy comments like the our relentless hunger for the rare earth elements used in our electronic gizmos maybe they will form another sediment well, i think this is a 
bit unlikely. I mean, how many billions of iPhones do you need for the rare elements inside them to be noticeable on the sediments? So anyways, they go and build this case and they say almost certainly not. They say Gavin and I don't believe Earth once hosted a 50 million year old Paleocene civilization. But by asking if we could see truly ancient industrial civilizations, we were forced to ask about the generic kinds of impacts any civilization might have on a planet. That's exactly the astrobiological perspective on climate change is all about, they say. Civilization building means harvesting energy from the planet to do work. Okay, so this is a neat article, certainly with much bigger outreach than mine. But in this point, I have a disagreement with them. I mean, of course, if forced to bet my money, I would bet against the possibility of an ancient civilization. But the authors of this article make this assumption that any intelligent being or society must leave a mark exactly like that of our own. But of course, the phase space for intelligent beings and societies is much, much larger. I mean, for example, there were philosophers in the antique ages, you know, ancient Greece and all that. Certainly a highly developed intelligent civilization. Yet at this level, they left no trace on the Earth's fossil deposits. They used biodegradable material for everything they did. And, you know, so what I'm getting at is you could have a sophisticated civilization without like petroleum, gas, plastics or iPhone deposits all over the place. Also, conversely, why do you assume that intelligent societies or intelligent beings would uh, manipulate the earth as drastically as we do? For example, they look at this Eocene event and they say, well, we look at this and it's not as rapid as the changes we are making on Earth right now. Okay, but what do you expect, you know? I mean, in that period there, uh, conceivably, perhaps there could have been, I don't know, colonial insects that are much more sophisticated than today. And they would be able to mine resources and perhaps somehow contribute to carbon emissions to the atmosphere. Just not as we are doing it today. I mean, I'm just spitting this off the top of my head now. But imagine a super termite or, I don't know, a super advanced early mammal prairie hog civilization. They don't even need to be as intelligent as human beings. They just have this surefire way to be build really big colonies, farm methane building fungus or plants in them and just spread all over the world. And in a short time, longer than ours, but anyways, they would produce these effects. And when they became extinct, they wouldn't leave behind fossils anything remotely like intelligent beings or other things you know so i don't know if i could collect my thoughts very clearly this is a neat article to read it but they're also making too many assumptions like even our civilization's traces of massive carbon emissions and so on and so forth it's only because we have things called companies and we have notion of an individual as a unit of spending money and making money. And over the last 50 years, companies have sold billions of people cars. And this is one of the major reasons why we have air pollution and such a mark on the planet's geographical memory, let's say. But of course, doesn't even have to be like that. I mean, you don't need to go back to termites or ancient Greece. Imagine if 
the society of the planet was stuck in pre World War One levels for five more centuries. Who would care? You would have just some elites running around on railroads and everybody else is just peasants or something. I mean, what I'm getting at is societies are far more variable and much more dependent on contingency than us, you know. I mean, they talk as if any civilizations, any intelligent beings, natural outcome is to buy lots of cars, pollute the atmosphere, build lots of plastics, and buy lots of iPhones. But that's just like a five to seven decade old phenomenon. And it's just a stroke of luck. I mean, so this article actually made me more hopeful for intelligent species in the Earth's past. They could be something in a form none of us considered before. You don't need, you don't even need an intelligent, like big brained vertebrate, you know, widespread insect colonies or uh, mega gophers or. I mean, something completely different could have done it. So there, yeah, read this article and please share your comments. Let's discuss this subject any further. Do you think there could have been an intelligent species in the world's past? And if so, what could they be? You know I respond. Take care and have a nice day.